welcome back to my channel today we're going to learn how to make this granny multicolored crochet dress it's inspired by an instagram image if you would like the written pattern it's already available on all my online shops and yeah let's jump right into the materials so for the materials you'll need a measuring tip a three millimeter crochet hook and a pair of scissors for the yarn You'll pick your colors as desired. Uh, these are the colors that I'll be using for my whole dress. So we're going to start off with our very first color, which is white. And since this is a demonstration, we're not going to do uh, a very long starting chain. So you're going to first make a chain that can run all the way from your shoulders up to where you want your dress to stop. So for me, that was a total of 172 chains, and it should be a multiple of three. So um, 172 for the actual dress, but here I'll be demonstrating with a chain of 30. So you're going to start off with a slip knot and make your desired chain from your shoulder all the way to where you want your dress to stop. So with my demonstration, I have a total of 30 chains, but if I was to use the actual piece, then it won't be able to be seen on frame totally. So um, we shall be using this demonstration. So I have my 30 chains and I hope you have your multiple of three and the length of the chain that you want for your total length of the dress. So you're going to go into the third chain, the fourth, chain from the hook so you've got to count one two three and four and into the fourth you're going to place a double crochet the first chain of three counts as a double crochet so so far we have a total of two double crochets then you're going to make a chain of one skip one chain and one double crochet in each of the next two stitches so one and then into the next chain one double crochet just like that and then chain one skip one chain one double crochet in each of the next two chains so you're going to repeat that all the way across chain one skip one chain stitch and one double crochet in each of the next two stitches All right, so we're coming to the end of the row and I have two, two chains left. So that means I had to do a multiple of three plus one chain. So I'll just add it here. So you should be left with a total of three chains and you're going to make a chain of one, skip over one chain and into each of the last two chains you're going to place one double crochet to end your row and this is what your row should look like so uh, our starting chain should be a multiple of three plus one chain and you're going to double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and then work the sequence uh, as shown below so this is what we have now we are going on to row two 
for row two, you're going to start off with a chain of four, which counts as a double crochet chain one. Turn your work, skip the next double crochet and go into the chain one space with two double crochets. Just like that. And then make a chain of one, two double crochets into the next chain one space. And you're going to repeat that all the way across. Chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space. So repeat that all the way across and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. So you're going to repeat until you place two double crochets into the last chain one space of the previous row. And now this leaves us with only two stitches at the end of the row. So you're going to make a chain of one, skip over this stitch and then go on top of the chain three and place a double crochet. <coughs> and this is what your work should look like for row two. And then at this point, you're going to switch onto the next color. At least that's what I did. So you're going to make a chain of one and you're going to cut your yarn and then introduce your next color. What I did for my dress was two rows of each color. So you make a chain of one, cut your yarn, and then introduce your next color. Mine will be red. So you're going to make a slip knot and then attach where you left off with your previous color here. You're going to attach your yarn into that very stitch, the last, the last stitch of the previous row. And then you're going to make a chain of three, which counts as a double crochet, and then one double crochet into the very first chain one space to make a total of two double crochets in this space. So from here, you're going to make a chain of one, two double crochets into the next chain one space chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space. So as you can see, we are not placing stitches into the stitches. We are placing them into the chain one spaces to create that granny pattern. So continue to do all the, uh, the chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space all the way across. All right, so this is what you should have. And then from here, you're going to make a chain of one and then go into the last chain for space and place two double crochets. So this marks the end of row three. Now we're going on to row four. For row four, you're going to start off with a chain of four, just like for row two. The chain of four counts as a double crochet chain one. Turn your work skip the next stitch and go into the next chain one space with two double crochets. Chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space. I know this is a dark color, but I hope you can see exactly what I'm doing. So repeat that all the way across until you place two double crochets into the very final chain one space of the previous row. So 
All right, when you place two double crochets into the last chain one space of the previous row, you're going to make a chain of one, skip over the next stitch, and on top of the chain three at the end of the previous row, you're going to place one double crochet there. And that marks the end of this row. So since I had told you I'm doing two rows of each color, I'm going to make a chain of one here and cut my yarn. Then I'll be able to introduce my next color, which is supposed to be yellow. So instead of introducing the yellow, we are going to repeat the two rows. I'm not going to do the whole process on camera because we've already figured out the pattern. So we want to repeat rows three and four, three and four again and again until you get this length because your work is growing like this. So you should be able to get this length to measure half of your hip measurement when slightly stretched. So half of the hip measurement that I am intending to make is 20 inches. So I'm going to keep working my panel until I have half of my hip measurement when slightly stretched. And now I'm going to introduce the actual piece that I made for, for the dress. So after the stitch demonstration, uh, we have this. And you can see how the colors are very vibrant. I did a total of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50. A total of 52 rows. And you can see how good this looks when worked uh, in the actual length of the dress. This was a demonstration, but this is where we started from, as you can see. So from white to red, then to white to yellow, like that. Uh, place your colors the way you want them. Um, for me, I did white, red, white, yellow. Then red, orange, white, red, white, red, yellow. It was just a gamble of colors. So. Uh, place your colors the way you want and then uh, Let me take this measurement with you guys Actually, I didn't stretch my work because my client doesn't want a body hugging piece so I Did just exactly 20 inches without stretching the panel so 52 rows to get to this level and now we're going on to the two front panels that we have to uh, make for the front piece of the dress. This is the back panel and you will be having a uh, so many ends to weave in at the end. As you can see the actual demonstration, you'll be having these tails. So what I did was just to tie a knot twice, just like this, and then cutting off the yarn, the excess yarn, after making a secure knot. Make sure that knot is very secure because I've had incidences of people, people's work unraveling because they didn't make a secure knot. So something like this, that's what you see at this point, at every point where we were attaching a new color. So this marks the end of the back panel. So let's go on to the front panels. For the front panels, we're going to start off the same exact way with the same exact number of chains that you started with for the back panel. So since I started with a total of 173, I'll also start with a total of 173 chains for the front panel. But the only difference is we're going to work the plain rows uh, from the beginning and uh, Keep repeating rows three and four until you have a total of 10 rows and then we start creating the decreases for the for the dress something like this so I'll be demonstrating that in the next clip so that we achieve something like this to create the v-neck 
as you can see here so uh, you're going to keep working rows three and four until you have a total of ten rows which are these ones one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten as you can see here we have a flat edge so once you get your ten rows or now I'll be uh, mentioning the number of rows that I did so I did 10 rows and then started decreasing but if you feel like you need more coverage around here especially for the bigger sizes if you did more rows for the back panel you may consider increments of two two rows like let me say this is a medium size so for a small size um, you can do a total of eight rows and then start decreasing so I'll be leaving all the recommendations on the screen so I'm going to be demonstrating how to do this decrease the one that slants to create the v-neck pattern right after getting the number of rows that you need for the plain rows for example for me I did a total of 10 rows we're going to start creating the v-neck shaping so since this is a demonstration I'm going to just teach you how to decrease to get that slant. So you attach your next color and you're going to make a chain of three and place one more double crochet into the same exact uh, space. We shall be decreasing on this side. So one of the sides remains flat and this side starts slanting. So after that double crochet chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space. So repeat that until you place two double crochets into the last chain one space of the previous row. All right, so we are placing our last two double crochets into the last chain one space of the previous row. And then you're going to directly go into the chain four space without chaining one. You're going to just go into the chain four space and place a double crochet. And that marks the end of the very first row of decrease for the V-neck. Now for the next row, you're going to make a chain of four. Turn your work. And you're going to skip over the next double crochet, skip the next um, double crochet. So two double crochets, the chain one space, and the next two double crochets. So we're going into the second chain one space. Of the previous row and placing two double crochets there. So chain four, skip over two groups of two double crochets and go into the next chain one space with two double crochets. Then make a chain of one and we're going back to our pattern with two double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one. And you're going to repeat that until you place two double crochets into the last chain one space of the previous row. So we've placed two double crochets into the last chain one space of the previous row. And you're going to make a chain of one, skip over the next double crochet. And on top of the chain three, you're going to place one double crochet there. So you can see how on this side the pattern is still the same so you're going to make a chain of one cut your yarn since I am making two rows of each color that means it's time for me to switch to the next color so you can see how we are starting to create that slant for the v-neck you're going to grab your next color mine will be yellow and 
you're going to attach it where you left off with your previous color. Attach your yarn, chain three, and place one more double crochet into the very first chain one space. From here, you're going to make a chain of one, two double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space. And you're going to repeat that until you place two double crochets into the very last chain one space of the previous row. So we are placing two double crochets into the last chain one space of the previous row, just like this. And then from here, you're going to directly go into the chain four space with a double crochet without chaining one in between, just like that. And then from here, you're going to repeat what you did for the second row of white, so which is row two of the decreases. So from here, you're going to make a chain of four, turn your work, skip two groups of two double crochets and go into the next chain one space. So skip this one and this one and into the next chain one space you're going to place two double crochets. So chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one and you're going to repeat that until the end of the row. when you place two double crochets into the last chain one space of the row. Chain one, skip the next stitch, and on top of the chain three, at the end of the previous row, you're going to place one double crochet. Then from here, you're going to make a chain of one, and cut your yarn. So that marks the end of the second row of this color. So you can see what we are doing. We are going to repeat row three of the decreases and row four. Keep repeating rows three and four until you have half of your back panel. Uh, so I told you I had a total of 52 rows for the back panel. So that means I have to do a total of 26 rows for one of the front panels and then 26 rows for the second front panel. So this is what I'm talking about. I did a total of 10 rows, plain, without any decreases, and then a total of 16 rows of decreases to create that slant at the front, to create the v-neck of the dress. And you can see what that looks like. So this will create the very first half of the dress. And another thing that you have to put into consideration is the placement of the colors. So when you're working your front panels, you have to consider how you placed the colors on the back panel. So this means the way the flow of the colors is this side. This means this front panel is for this side. And then you're going to create a second front panel, the same exact way that you've did, you've done this one on this side, following the color sequence from this side like this onwards. So we have two front panels that create a V-neck at the front of the dress. So just like this. So I hope that makes sense because this demonstration has been able to explain everything. The front panel, the back panel, the two front panels and the back panel as well as the v-neck shaping. So this demonstration has been of help. So you're going to go ahead and cut your loose ends and now we're going to start assembling everything together.
to join the two pieces the three pieces together so the front panel the back panel and the second front panel All right, guys, now we're going to join the sides of the dress as well as the middle part and the top part of the dress. So make sure your work is on the wrong side because you're going to join this area here plus this, the 10 rows at the top of the dress or whichever number of rows that you did for the plain rows here before you started decreasing for the v-neck. And then we're going to leave space for the sleeves and join the sides of the dress. So to do that, I'm going to be using my crochet hook. And the color that I'm going to be using to join is white because it's the color that's mostly on the edges of the dress, as you can see here. So I'll be using color white to join the pieces together. So let's start off with the very top of the dress, which is here. We're going to attach our yarn into that very first row on both panels. And you're going to single crochet two times in each and every row just single crochet two times for the straight part of the front panel so since I have 10 rows of the front panel I'm going to just single crochet until those 10 rows are done so I'll have a total of 20 single crochets Alright, so I've joined the straight part and I'm going to make a chain of one and cut my yarn. Leaving a strand behind to weave in. And you're going to repeat the same exact process for this side. For the opposite side. So make a slip knot and making sure you're working on the wrong side of the work. I'm still going to come from the outside edge onto the inside. <coughs> so go into the first row and attach your yarn and attach your straight rows with two single crochets into each and every row. So this is my last row, which is supposed to be the 10th row or the last row of the straight rows before the v-neck. Chain one, cut your yarn. <coughs> so let's see what we have right now at the back of the dress. We are still on the wrong side of the dress, not the back of the dress. So you can see what we have. We've joined the shoulder area. So we don't join these rows, the rows that uh, create the v-neck shaping, we don't join them anywhere. So we are done with the shoulder part. 
and the next part that I'm going to join is this middle part this one so <clears throat> I'm going to start from here the very last decrease that we have here so from this stitch all the way down to the base of the dress so that we no longer have a split between the two front panels so you can see what we have right now so to avoid that we're going to join the middle section together make a slip knot and then go into the very first stitch after the last decrease after the chain of four and do the same on this side and I'm going to just join with a single crochet into each and every stitch and into each and every chain one space all the way down so this is going to take a while so I'm going to speed it up a bit until I get to the bottom of the dress so you can see how the v-neck has been created so join all the way down and I'll meet you back when I'm done with that All right, so we are coming to the end of joining the midsection of the dress, joining the two front panels together in the middle, and I'm attaching my very last stitch. Chain one and cut your yarn. And this is how the seam line is going to look like. Of course, this is the wrong side of the dress. And when it comes to the right side, it's almost invisible, as you can see here. So on the wrong side, you'll be seeing this bump on, of the single crochet that we've used to join the midsection of the two front panels. But when it comes to the right side, you won't be seeing anything. This is what everything looks like. And you can see the v-neck at this point. You, just, you can see that this is the back, the straight back panel. And then this is the v-neck. So we're going to continue to join the sides of the dress. The side openings so we have this and the one on the other side this one so we're going to join all the way from the bottom of course on the wrong side where we have the bump of the single crochet joinings on the sleeves and in the middle section so make sure your work is folded on the wrong side so i went ahead to join the sides of the dress as you can see here into each stitch and each chain one space and I left room for sleeves as you can see here just make sure you leave enough room for your arm to fit and then I did the same exact thing on this side so we have two sleeve openings and all right now for the sleeves we are going to start off with a chain of 23 we're going to start off with a slip knot and make a chain Alright, so for the sleeve, I'm starting off with a total of 24 chains. If you're a bigger size, then you're going to consider uh, around 30 chains. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So I have my 24 chains. You're going to prepare for a double crochet by yarning over and go into the fifth chain from the hook. So counting from this one, one, two, three, four, and into the fifth, you're going to place a double crochet. And then double crochet into the next chain. So from here, you're going to make a chain of one, skip one chain, and double crochet once into each of the next two stitches. Chain one, skip one chain, one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. And you're going to repeat that all the way across. I'll show you how to wind up at the end of the row. Alright, now when you have three chains left, you're going to make a chain of one, skip one chain and one double crochet in each of the last two chains just like that and then you're going to make a chain of one and double crochet again into that very last chain just to balance what we have at the very beginning of the row now from here our repeat row is make a chain of four turn your work and go into the very first chain one space with two double crochets chain one two double crochets into the next chain one space chain one two double crochets into the next chain one space and you're going to repeat this all the way across until you come towards the end of the row and i'll show you how to wind up So we are coming to the end of row two and I'm placing two double crochets into the very last chain one space. And then you're going to make a chain of one and go into the last chain four space, place two double crochets, chain one and one more double crochet into the same space. So the fact that I am dealing with uh, two rows of each color that means I'm done with this one. I'm going to make a chain of one, cut my yarn, and then I will introduce my next color, which is red. So as I had said earlier on, this is the repeat row, row two. So I'm going to just demonstrate how to attach a new color, and you'll go ahead repeating row two, again and again until your sleeve grows into the length that you want it to be. So attach your yarn where you left off with the previous color. Just like that, make a chain of four, just like we did for row two. Make a chain of four, go into the very first chain one space with two double crochets. Chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one. Two double crochets into the next chain one space and repeat this all the way across until you place two double crochets into the very last chain one space of the previous all right so when you place your two double crochets into the last chain one space of the previous row you're going to make a chain of one and go into the chain four space at the end of the row and you're going to place two double crochets chain one and one more double crochet and you can see that's the same exact thing that we did for row two so we are going to just repeat this row again and again and you'll see your panel widening towards the side this is going to create the measurement that we need for our arm circumference. So I have already done a small sample here. 
and uh, I'm circumference that I'm aiming for is about 12 inches and this is exactly what I did I kept growing my panel until I had approximately 12 inches for the arm circumference and when you fold it over like this we shall create that and you can see it's a bit stretchy so uh, it won't be very loose around my clients arms so make sure you get that arm circumference right so keep working and growing your panel until the base here is your arm circumference or the circumference of the arm of the person that you're making it for make sure it can fit around the arms otherwise it's going to be very tight and uncomfortable for them so when you're done with your very first panel you're going to make a second one identical to the first one because we need two sleeves and now we're going to get our stitch markers and reintroduce the dress so that we can attach these pieces onto the dress so one thing you can do right now is to get rid of the loose ends on the sides so that they don't interfere with the attaching process onto the actual dress and now you're going to introduce your two sleeves we've cleaned up the edges and now we're going to start attaching them onto the sleeve opening that we just created so you're going to fold this into half and locate the exact middle of the sleeve so the exact middle is here you're going to get some stitch markers I have mine here you're going to get the exact middle of your sleeve and you're going to attach it at the very top of the sleeve just like this like that and then you're going to continue to carefully place the stitch markers to fit into the sleeve opening that you have on the body of the dress so my first one is the exact middle and the second one is at the very bottom so the rest I'm going to just randomly place them so that they can evenly attach onto the sleeve opening so So something like this make sure nothing is scrunched up so once you place your stitch markers like this you're going to get your yarn and I decided to use white to attach my sleeves so I'll still be using white and this is the wrong side of my work so I'm going to use white and I'm going to attach randomly this doesn't have a formula really so I'm going to remove my first stitch marker and I start attaching onto one side of the sleeve make sure you're not working into both panels because that area there has to be open so that your arm can pass through So just randomly place single crochet stitches wherever you can. As long as you're not distorting the shape of the dress, everything should be fine. And as long as you're not making few or a lot of stitches, 
your project should be perfectly fine so whenever you reach a stitch marker you just remove it and continue to single crochet randomly around your sleeve opening attaching your sleeve onto the body of the dress so let's see what we have so far you can see that Alright, so we are done with one side and this is what it looks like. So we are going to go all the way to the other side. All right, so we're coming to the end and I'm removing my very last stitch marker. And this is what it has created. You can see that opening there. From here, I'm going to just slip stitch onto the opposite side chain one and cut my yarn so let's see what we have All right so the back side of the sleeve looks like like this and then the right side looks like this you'll be seeing the final look later on but this is just a brief insight of what it should be looking like so your arm has to pass through here try it on and make sure it can fit perfectly well so do the same exact process for the second sleeve and i'll meet you back after that
Okay, so with both sleeves attached, as you can see here, you're going to turn your work onto the right side. So on the right side, the sleeves will look like this. And don't mind the width of the chest area right now. We're going to deal with it later on. So we're going to first do the ribbing at the base of the dress and you're going to give it a red color. So we're going to first do the bottom ribbing of the dress and then later on we shall deal with the upper part of the dress. So what I'm doing right now is getting rid of any loose ends that are at the base of the dress. So that we have a clean edge to work with. So the final color at the base of the dress is going to be red. So grab your red color. And attach your yarn in any row. I'm going to just attach at the back of the dress into any row. And I think for the ribbing, actually, let me use two strands so that it can be a little bit thicker than the actual feel of the dress. I'm going to use two, two strands so that I can have a thick ribbing. Right. So you're going to attach your yarn and you're going to make a chain of three. You're going to place one more double crochet into the same exact row. So we're just going into each and every row with two double crochets all the way around. So place two double crochets in each and every row around the bottom of the dress. And you can see what this is creating. Something thicker than the body of the dress. So go all the way around, I'll meet you back at the beginning of the round. Alright, so we've made it all the way around and I placed two double crochets into the very last row and I'll slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the round. Alright, so I'm going to make only one row of the bottom edging and after my chain of one, I'm going to cut my yarn and pull through. So that marks the end of the base of the dress. So... You're going to get rid of the loose ends. Alright, 
for this project whenever i get a chance to get rid of the loose ends please do because they can get really annoying and messy at the end of the project so for the sleeve edging i'm going to attach my yarn and i'm still using two strands so that i achieve a thicker look for the edging of the sleeves as you can see here we're going to just work around the sleeve so you're going to make a chain of three and you're going to go into each and every stitch with one double crochet and into every chain one space with one double crochet so just go all the way around into each stitch and each chain one space with one double crochet we're coming to the end of the row and this is what you should have and you're placing one double crochet in each of the last stitches of the sleeve then going into the chain one space with one double crochet and you're going to slip stitch on top of the chain three at the beginning of the round and I feel like this is just enough you're going to make a chain of one And you're going to cut your yarn this is just enough for the sleeve I don't want to do anything dramatic to it so this will be just enough and I'm going to do the same exact thing on the opposite side so you can see what the sleeves look like both are done i just did one row of red just to create an edging for them and from here you're going to get rid of all the loose ends if you have only one strand i advise you use a darning needle to get rid of the loose ends but since i have two i'll use uh, a knot but for the points where I have only one strand I will go ahead and get rid of those loose ends with a turning needle So for example this one so this all right so for the neckline we are going to keep it simple we are going to make one round of white and then one round of red so for the white i'm going to use a double strand just like we've been doing at the boundaries of the dress for example the sleeves and the bottom band so you're going to attach your yarn And make a chain of two to start and into the chain four space you're going to place three double crochets so the chain of three uh, the chain of two at the beginning counts as one so you have your other two which is a total of three and then you're going to go into the double crochet space with only two double crochets like that so into the chain of four, you place three double crochets. And then into the double crochet space, you're going to place two double crochets. So repeat that all the way up until you get to the back side of the neckline. This is what you'll get.
all right so we've made it all the way up and you can see what this looks like so we're going to go onto the back side of the neckline and we're going to place two double crochets in each row at the back of the neckline just two double crochets into each and every row Alright, when you make it across the back of the neckline, this is what you should have. Now we are going to go back down, placing um, three double crochets in each chain for space. And two double crochets in each double crochet space. So repeat that until you get to the exact middle of the v-neck where we started our row from. All right, so I've placed my three double crochets into the very last row. And to wind up, I'm going to just slip stitch on top of the very first stitch at the beginning of the round, because now we've joined it into a round. So let's see what we have from here. This is what you'll have. You can see the white edging on the neckline. So from here, you're going to make your chain of one and cut your yarn because we are done with the white part. You can get rid of these loose ends. Alright, so we are done with the very first row of the neckline and this can be it but uh, I think I'm going to put a red lining on the edge as I had told you earlier I don't like having a bright color on the edges because they usually get dirty very fast so I'll be using my red color to clean up the edge and to do that, I'm not going to use a double crochet. I'm just going to use a single crochet all the way around the neckline edging. So you can start from anywhere as long as you're working on the right side of your work. I'll start from here. Make a chain of one and single crochet into the very first stitch. And continue to single crochet in each and every stitch all the way around when you get to the end you will just slip stitch into the very first single crochet and I'll meet you back when I'm done with that just one single crochet in each and every stitch all the way around the neckline
all right so we've made it around the neckline as you can see with the red color so after placing a single crochet into your, into your very last stitch you're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round like that and then make a chain of one and cut your yarn so that's it basically you're going to get rid of these loose ends as well and you're going to go all the way around the dress and make sure you don't have any loose ends laying around and let's see the final look of this dress we've done the general structure of the dress and i think this marks the end of this tutorial thank you so much for watching and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more amazing content and uh, i'll see you in my next video let's see the final look of this dress all right guys if you have a smaller waistline as compared to your hip measurement we're going to gather up a few rows so that we get that snatched look at the back of the dress so you're going to turn your work to the back i've already determined the level of the waistline is around here so i'm going to count a few rows in and i'm going to go in and out of every two stitches so determine the level of your waistline and go in and out of every two stitches all the way to the other side and we are going to gather up the back side as you'll see so make sure you leave the same exact number of seat or of rows on each end of the back panel and then you're going to pull this chain through just like that and then from here you can go ahead and tie this back side of the dress this is optional you can do it in any way that you want but this is what I'm going to do for the waistline of this dress and let's see what we have in the end <laughs>